Hello from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, where Michigan defeated Loyola Chicago to advance to the national championship. Villanova beat Kansas uh, just a little while ago on this court, so that's the two teams that will play Monday night. Uh, and, and Michigan used a huge second half run to win this game. It was a 17-2 run at one point, and even bigger over, over a longer stretch. I know, I know you wrote about it. Um, and that, that's really what won them the game. Yeah, and, and, and you look at the first about 20, 26, 28 minutes, and they couldn't hit anything. They were shooting, you know, Portland has seen them shoot. I think, I think Loyola's defense did have a lot to do with that, but I don't know if it's um, if it's the atmosphere or what it was, but they just couldn't hit anything. And, and I don't think a whole lot of people, you know, they were down 10 at one point with about 13 minutes left, and there, there wasn't a whole lot of reason to believe. But you talked to players, and they said, we knew that run was going to come. Um, and they said when they couldn't hit anything, they were trying to focus on their defense, mm -hmm. trying to focus on the rebounding. They did both of those pretty well. And um, lo and behold, uh, John Simmons hits a uh, three-pointer. Uh, Mo Wagner did Mo Wagner things, which we'll talk about soon. Um, I thought Jordan Poole came off the bench, gave him a little bit of a spark. And all of a sudden, it's, you know, snap your fingers, and they go from down 10 to up 7. And, and players talk about how, I mean, there's 64,000 people in here. They could just feel the momentum going towards. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a big thing for them. And, and once they got going, I think it was clear to them and everybody else uh, what direction that he was going. You, you mentioned the bench. Uh, it, was, it was Simmons' first three since the last regular season game. Huh. Um, it was, you know, Poole, um, you know, he's obviously had some big moments, but still, Beeline played 11 guys in the first half. Um, and to be able to, to turn to these guys, even for just a few minutes, um, and get a basket here, a basket there, um, is huge. It's, it's been big for this Michigan team um, all season. Now, yeah, you mentioned Loyola's defense. It was good. They're a good defensive team. But Michigan has faced better defensive teams, uh, actually, all tournament, um, and had... You know, more success than, than for much of the, the game today. Um, and I think it's just, you know, they've seen it all with these switching screens and, and all this stuff. I think it was just, yeah, a bad night where, where the shots weren't falling. Um, you can blame it on the dome, but you know, I had a story on that earlier this week. The stats show that's not really the case. Um, but Wagner was just huge. Um, you know, in the first half, it was all offensive putbacks. I think he had five offensive rebounds in the first half, and, and four of them he put right back in. Um, in the second half, the Loyola did some things to, to neutralize that, but he hits a couple threes, um, you know, still scored inside, um, and really, really carried them. Charles Matthews was huge as well. Um, we'll be getting into that later on MLive.com. Um, you know, Loyola didn't really have an answer for his athleticism, for strength, getting to the rim. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that's most versatility to me, though. You know, he scores in one way, getting put back. Loyola makes the adjustment; they take that away, and he steps out 18 more feet and sets it in three pointers. Absolutely. You know, and that's why I mean, we talk about him a lot, and you know, Michigan fans are probably t tired of hearing about always oh, a matchup nightmare or anything. <laughs> but like this, this is why. I mean, a team that's undersized did not have a guy that could really guard him one on one. Mm -hmm. and they tried to do a bunch of different things, and. Um, he went for 24 and 15. I mean, you can't have much bigger ones than that. 24 so. and 15 in 36 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so he will sleep well tonight, and uh, he'll rest up tomorrow. He won't like resting tomorrow and all day Monday uh, until you know nine something p.m. Uh, I guess I guess eight here uh, Central Time. Um, he, he he's a guy who likes to play. He'd rather play tomorrow, but um, they will have to wait. It'll be it'll be Villanova, and I'm looking at a box score here from Villanova, and I'm seeing 18 made three, three pointers. pointers. Final four record. <laughs> Final four record. Uh, they you know they've opened as a six seven point favorite against Michigan, and, and rightfully so. We kind of talked about Loyola maybe being a you know slightly worse version of, of Michigan. Um, I think Michigan might honestly be a slightly worse version of Villanova, just as far as their their shooting capabilities and the way they spread the floor. Uh, Michigan will have to play really well Monday night to beat them, but well, yes. they can. They can. Uh, I mean, we'll talk more about Villanova. But you look at Jalen Brunson; he won a national player of the year award here the other day. Great guard, uh, averaging 19 points a game. Uh, Michael Bridges in the backcourt with him, and you know you go on, uh, but they they just have so many shooters out there. That's right. Going to be the key in that one, and we saw it tonight. And the dome, I don't think affected them. Now, now tonight in the locker room, post game locker room, when, when some of the Michigan players uh, learned that tomorrow is a kind of a full media uh, afternoon as well, they, they were a little surprised at that. But I'll say the positive that can come out of that for Michigan is that point guard Xavier Simpson will hear what you just said about Jalen Brunson being the national player of the year 10 to 20 times. Yes. And he will be 
ready for that matchup. Very hungry he is, he is. I think he can be hungry enough after going, what, 0 for 6 today before turnovers or whatever he was? Uh, yeah, he'll be ready yeah. to redeem himself no matter what, but, but certainly, uh, you know, taking on a player of his uh, Brunson's stature, um, you know, will we'll fire him up even more, and I think he'll be, he'll be ready for that challenge now. Being ready for it and actually, uh, you know, winning that battle or neutralizing Brunson is, is a completely different uh, thing, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. For Kyle Austin, I am Andrew Kahn, and Live.com. Thanks for listening.